Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Y'all all right, man? What's shaking here? The cold got to you? Do we need to turn the AC on? <laughs> sure, it's warm in here, isn't it? Thank you, Jesus. Ah, <laughs> oh, Master, you're so good to us. First Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. First Pete chapter one. Glory. Where is he? Is everybody there? Good. Go to chapter five, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Verse 5, 5 5. Everybody there? Let's speak it together. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. That means be respectful. And be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud. But gives grace to the humble. Again, the word grace means his plan. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time or bless you or release a promise to you. Casting all your what? Your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober. Be what? Be sober, which means alert. Be vigilant, which means consistent. See, there are rewards for being alert and consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. In other words, he's after you. He's after you. So the word says make no place for the devil, right? So in this, we've got to be not only alert, but consistent. In other words, in maintaining the things that God has directed us to do. Amen? In this, there's something that's established that's called accountability. To be accountable brings credibility. When a person is not accountable, trust begins to diminish. When a person is accountable, trust builds. Same thing with someone at work. If a person doesn't show up at work enough times, you know that you can't trust them. Amen? And anything that we do. So in this, the same thing in the spirit. God is saying, look, I've given you something to do. Are you accountable to do it? Are you alert? Are you faithful to complete it? So we must be consistent in what he asks us to do. Why? So once it's been completed, you receive the promise, a reward. Listen, God loves to reward his children. But he does not reward disobedience. And he doesn't reward individuals that are not accountable. He will not. Those people usually bring themselves into self-rewards. And they think that they're God's rewarding when they're actually rewarding themselves. Is everybody okay? It says, resist them steadfast in the what? In the what? In the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So it says, resist them in the faith. Now, faith, of course, is your connection. There's something about faith also that I want to talk about. But first, let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 1.
Halleluja. In verse 3. Be steadfast in the faith. Forever attached in the heavenlies. Faith. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through what? Faith. For salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, Though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials or challenges. That the genuineness, the sincerity, the purity of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So we are kept by the power through faith. <laughs> this may sound pretty crazy, but it's called paid protection. You're genuine, you're, 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 the quality the sincerity of your faith or of your connection with him. Remember, faith is associated with your connection with him. With God, it is the ability to purchase from heaven the things that pertain to a righteous living life. Why? Faith is money in heaven. You purchase everything with faith. Without faith, you don't get nothing. Does everybody get it? Faith is... Is purchase substance in heaven. In Revelation 3. That's why it's called blind. Blind can't do nothing. Can't purchase. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are kept by the power through faith. So everything that you receive from heaven is purchased by faith. Revelation 3 and verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the lowest Decians write, These says the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of creation of God. Is everybody with me? Okay. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm. Hmm. You are lukewarm. You ain't hot no more. And neither cold nor hot, I will what? Vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I'm rich, have become wealthy, and have not need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. He says, I counsel you to buy from me gold. What is the gold? It's called faith. Does everybody understand this? Buy from me what? The faith. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word of the voice of God. So he's saying in this, buying gold refined. How is gold refined? How is faith refined? Through your challenges. You are being challenged every single day. 
your faith is either growing or diminishing. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Is that done by faith? Yeah. It's like reserving a reservation with Jesus, you know. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In this area uh, where he says, by gold, by faith, refined through your challenges to increase the value of your faith, so it becomes more sincere and more genuine. In that, the value of your faith increases you're able to purchase more things. Lukewarmness is called compromised. An individual becomes compromised. I call it a misuse of liberty. Compromise is a misuse of liberty. And that's one of the things the Spirit wants to release tonight and bring on understanding because there's too many people that are just misusing the liberty that God's given them. In Hebrews chapter 11, Two compromises to what? Misuse liberty of God. The freedom he's given us. Again, to compromise is lukewarm. That means faith is diminishing. In Hebrews 11, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Now, faith is the what? Substance. It is in Bitcoin. Amen? If you don't know what Bitcoin is. It's digital currency. This is eternal currency. <laughs> now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. What are, what are you, if you're hoping for something, that means you're hoping to get something. Amen? That's to be purchased. The evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead still speak. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he what? He pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is a what? He is a rewarder of those who diligently, consistently Seek him. Faith is the substance used to purchase. Faith. There's the faith associated with your connection. And there's a faith of purchase where God rewards the seekers. In Hebrews 4. Let's speak at verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said, so I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from his, all, all of his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. 
Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day, saying to David, Today, after such a long time as it has been said, Today, if you will what? Hear his voice or hear his words. Do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be what? Diligent. There's that consistent word again. To enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of what? Disobedience. Faith is rewarded by obedience. Amen? It's rewarded. So faith comes by hearing, but hearing without obeying, there's no reward. Amen? Faith is rewarded by obedience. Again, hearing and then doing. To rest in this, he says, and they will enter my rest, is to abide. There's a place where you rest in God. You are abiding in him. You are completely sold out and trusting in him. You have no worries, no concerns. In Galatians chapter 5. Disobedience is a misuse of liberty. Galatians chapter 5. In verse 1. You know, because there isn't instant judgment these days, <laughs> thank God for Jesus who holds back judgment or wrath of God. Believe me, if there was instant judgment, people would not be <laughs> We wouldn't be doing some of the things we did. Amen? And so what that does is it, it allows the open door to compromise and misuse the liberty that God has given us. That's why the Holy Spirit is always setting things up for me. He set boundaries up. He brings conviction. He gives us, he tells us things to come. He warns us. Why? So we do not misuse that liberty. That is offensive to God. In verse 1, let's speak it. Stand fast, therefore, in the what? Liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You attempt to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. Hmm. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. He said, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Now, how did that little leaven get in there? It's called the misuse of the liberty of God. Amen? That's how that little leaven gets in. That's where a person starts falling from hot to lukewarm. I have confidence in you. In the Lord that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. Verse 12. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty or freedom. Only do not use this freedom and liberty as an opportunity for what? 
the flesh or selfish ambitions, but through love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become be consumed by one another. I say that walk in a spirit and you no, will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Freedom or liberty in Christ as a new creation in Christ. We were freed from the bondage. We are called into the spirit of Christ, into a liberty, no longer under carnal control. Amen? But control and carnality. Fulfilling the law by obedience. Your obedience in the spirit fulfills the law. That's why you must be led by the spirit. Fulfilling the law by obedience, by the words and the voice of Christ, holding to the boundaries of righteousness. In other words, there's the boundaries of righteousness God has set for me and you. Those boundaries are expressed through the Word of God and through the leading of the Spirit. It's a boundary of not only His righteousness so that we maintain this righteousness, but it's protection. Why? So you, don't, you and I do not sway from faith and misuse the liberty. We are accountable for everything. See, one of the things that so many people don't realize that whatever you sow, you reap. <laughs> whatever you sow, you reap. Nobody gets away with what you sow. Amen? Nobody. Nobody gets away with anything. Whatever you sow, you reap. Now, God can turn all things into good, but you're going to still reap it. Now, he may cause your reaping to use it for challenging and training. Everybody reaps whatever they sow, no matter what. And what's he doing it for? That's that chastening part, too. Because he's trying to keep us in a place and position so we are consistent. Without consistent, you will never be trusted by God. That's where a person falls into double-mindedness. They are led by how they feel. In fact, they change the promises of God for their feelings. Hallelujah. That is a misuse of our liberty in Christ Jesus. And 1 Corinthians 6. Oh, happy days. First Corinthians six verse nine. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers or extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Look at this next one. All things are what? Lawful for me, but not all things are what? Helpful. In other words, we have freedom. But don't allow the freedom of Christ lead you into a bondage. Or works of the flesh. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God both Raised up, the Lord and will say, also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, have, shall become one flesh. 
but he was joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? And that's where many people lose sight of, wait a minute, this is, I, I don't own this. We are stewards now of this temple. We are stewards of everything from God. You and I don't own anything. He owns it all. Thank God our Father owns it all. Isn't that nice? But we are now stewards of it. That does not give me and you the right to misuse the liberty of it. Amen? In other words, you're not going to take Dad's car out without permission. Amen? Everything must be accountable. For you are bought at a what? At a what? Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Not all things are helpful. Again, we are free with a free will to do anything. Go anywhere, see anything, hear anything, speak anything, purchase anything, do anything, knowing there is a consequence of everything. Yet we are restricted, or what I want to say restrained, by the boundaries of the Spirit. We are restrained by the boundaries of the Spirit. Why? To not misuse this freedom. We are restrained by the boundaries of the Spirit and revelation. How's revelation come? Purchased by faith. Not misusing our liberty. Not allowing emotional desire to replace the promises of God. Amen. Is everybody okay? Again, we want to be careful. We want to be able to discern this area of not misusing the freedom God's given us. For the works of the flesh and selfish ambitions. Again, you and I have the choice to do anything. The whole world does, don't they? They have a free will. But we have supposedly given up our will. So that means that there's got to be an acknowledgement in everything you do. Even in your purchases, where you go, what you say, what you see, whatever. There's got to be an acknowledgement. That's accountability to God. And the more that God can trust you, the more things can expand more. Amen? There are things that he will give one person that he won't give another person. Because some things could be a stumbling block to a person. And he won't. Everything is earned. Remember, trust is earned. In Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Again, you've heard me share this uh, over and over about things that are in divine order. That's accountability. If a person is in divine order, if things are not in divine order, if their priorities are not in divine order, well, then they're really not accountable. Because that is a fruit of accountability. Accountable to God. Amen. And accountable to man. But you can't be accountable to God if you can't be accountable to man. You may think you are, but you're not. Galatians 4 verse 1. Misuse of liberty. We don't want that. And I really believe that the Lord is saying enough's enough. Look at how many people have backslidden. Amen? That's, you don't backslide without a misuse of liberty. Hello? And, and, and in that, people have backslidden into the mis, because of the misuse of liberty and gone dark, deep. And the darkness is our, and are lost and blinded now. And under the control of demonic forces instead of under the control of the Spirit of God. Some of them are under control of their own flesh. No dominion. Emotional life up and down. Unstable. They live by how they feel. They live for a feeling. In verse 1, let's speak it. Ephesians 4, or... Galatians 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? 
Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ from a slave, though he is master of all. But is under what? Guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Not appointed by man. Not appointed by how you feel. <laughs> not appointed by what we've accomplished. But appointed by the Father. This is where much of freedom is misused. Verse 3. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be what? In bondage. Why? Did they misuse their liberty? Yes. You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all. You know that because of the physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. What then was the blessing you enjoyed? For I bear you witness that, if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. Have I therefore become your enemy because I would tell you the truth? They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to ex exclude you, that you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous in the good things always, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is what? Formed in you. See, the more that the divine nature, the more the development of Christ, the divine nature, the more you are a partaker of the divine nature, the more things tighten up in your life. In other words, things are not loose. The freedom is not loose. It's tight. Because there's boundaries. In fact, the Holy Spirit allows you to set the boundaries when you've earned his trust. Just like when the Lord told Adam, name the animals. The Holy Spirit will allow you, in fact, he'll test you on that as you begin to set boundaries. You know, Lord, I don't think this is, you know what? But he wants you to set the boundaries. That's when he begins to wean you into the area. He, it's not that he's distant from you, but it seems like he's distant from you sometimes. But now he's saying, come on, I want you to get accustomed because the divine nature is now bound to your spirit. Now be led by the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Set the boundaries. Remember, you and I are all self-encased child of God carrying the presence of God. The anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty is in me and you. We're to be led by the Spirit. Amen? And we're, then we're not under the law. Oh, happy days. Is everybody Okay? Praise God. The law of sin and death. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the law of liberty of the Spirit. Under boundaries of protection by faith, not misusing our liberty. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go. Uh, uh, I want to go over one other little thing here. Especially when he says here in verse 9, 
But now after you have known God, or rather have known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be what? In bondage. Again, that is a misuse of the freedom of God. Because we're not checking. There's not enough check. Is this approved by you, Lord? Is this approved by you? See, that's why he puts us under those who are more mature so that we learn to check these things until we learn it on our own. And so that the Holy Spirit now checks with you. Yo, that's not cool. Do this, whatever. Amen? So that we're no longer asking for things that we know is incorrect. That's where people ask amiss. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. I've come across many Christians that fall under the area to where it's a misuse of liberty. Under the things that the world approves of. Or God doesn't. Purchasing things, whatever it may be, watching things, whatever. One of the things I, I've noticed many times is where individuals have been living together for a long time and now they call themselves married when they're really not. That's a misuse of God's liberty. Yet they call themselves Christians. Listen, you and I are not under common law. We're under eternal. Amen? And many other things. But that's just a part of it. That's a misuse of the liberty of God. Psalm 37, verse 1. Let's speak it. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and where there is a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do what? Good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait, what? Patiently endure for and seek him. Why? Because he's a rewarder of those who seek him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, and do not fret. It only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth for yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you look carefully for him, his place, but it shall not be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. He, so he says, see, delight, seek, fellowship, trust, acknowledge, chase, worship him. Worship him. Again, that goes to that place where the more you press over, the more you cross over, the more you increase in the divine nature. Amen? In Proverbs 3. Misuse of liberty. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3, verse 1. Jesus came to bring us life and life abundantly. Amen? But not to misuse the liberty. He wants us to prosper in all things, doesn't he? And it says, as your soul prospers, so you, your health and everything else. He wants to bless us. 
but he doesn't want to misuse the blessing. In verse 1, let's speak it. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart and find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean on not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For his proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things that you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways, her ways are what? Ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. So you think we need some wisdom? Amen. How about some understanding? Amen. And God wants to release that to each and every one of us. Now I'm going to ask you a strange question. How do you get it? You have to buy it. Called what? Faith. We ask in what? Faith. <laughs> spiritual. This is a spiritual guideline. These are boundaries right here. So that you and I do not misuse the liberty of God. Amen. He just gave it all right here. Proverbs 3, 1 through 18. There's the guidelines. Psalm 16. And we'll close here. In verse 7. Everybody there? Speak it. I will bless the Lord who is what? Giving me counsel. Do we get counsel tonight? Amen. My heart also instructs me in the night season. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Let me tell you, <laughs> people would not use, misuse the liberty of God if the Lord was before them all the time. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore and more. You know, God likes to surprise us. He likes to bless us. He likes to, there's things that you may not think that he would approve of. Then all of a sudden it's like, here, I want you to do this. I want you to get that. I want, whatever it may be. It's a reward. It's a reward. So he is actually rewarding you with faith to purchase something. Does everybody understand that? Remember, faith is substance. It's used to purchase everything in heaven. So without faith, you can't get nothing. You got a lot of false hope. And you can't borrow somebody else's faith. Amen? And they can't loan you theirs. You can't take a loan out on faith. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask, Lord, enough, not only for your wisdom and knowledge, but for discernment and understanding so we can be very sensitive to the boundaries that you have set for us 
so that we do not misuse your liberty. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Stay dressed with the glory.